How y'all doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm tired. You know, we went to the pink barber. There's a four eight. We got this small. I don't like it. Hi, Wayne. Hey, there, sir. How you doing? Doing great. How's everything? Good. You're not taking a picture of me, are you? No. Okay. Well, you did get me in a picture. Boy, we still. Boy, Cam was like, he's still playing. The last time I was here, he was like, he's still playing. 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 He's The name Pratt may sound familiar since it was incorporated into the name of the lovely village in which many of you reside. However, before that lovely village of Prattville existed, Indian Hill was an important and vibrant community on the road between the town of Washington on the Alabama River and the town of Kingston, which was the county seat at that time. On the south side of the cemetery here stood the Methodist Episcopal Church. This was at a time when the property that I subsequently purchased was a habitat fit only for the bear and the panther, indeed a swamp, as they said back then. But the Methodist Episcopal Church stood on this property. As I recall, the superintendent of the Sabbath school in those days was the beloved William D. Smith, steward of the Methodist Church. There was an also an academy during the week so the young men of this locale could be educated. The Schoolmaster, as I recall, was Mr. George Graham, assisted by his brother James. This is before Prattville existed, as I say, and when I was living in a log cabin with a tilted dirt chimney 
one mile up Otago Creek from the Alabama River. After Prattville developed, I remember that Mac A. Smith and his younger brother, Alfred Yarbrough, who's buried here, were members of my own Union Sabbath School at the Methodist Church in Prattville. I also recall that Alfred Yarbrough and his father owned a brickyard in this area, and I assume it was Alfred himself who built this wall around the family plot after the passing of his father. It was also Alfred who received the Dragoon unit flag from my niece, Abigail Holt, at that famous ceremony in April 1861 at the Prattville Male and Female Academy. In addition to Alfred, there are at least four other Confederates buried here in the cemetery. There is Lieutenant Dixon Sasnet Hall, buried just behind me here, and he will speak to us in a few moments. There are the two Rice brothers, Luther and Julius. I recall too that their sister Elizabeth married Mr. Brantley Cheek whose monument stands just at the corner of the Smith family plot here. Luther, I also recall, in, after the war between the states, was ordained a Methodist minister and became the minister at Indian Hill Church here beginning in 1868. Finally, there's Mr. G.Z. Wood buried in that direction near the fence he was a member of the Alabama Home Guard, and I neglected to mention that the Rice brothers were in Company A of the 8th Alabama Cavalry Regiment. If I may be permitted a word about the war between the states, it is well known that I was opposed to immediate secession and instead, along with others, had advocated a program of industrialization of the South, a combination of industry and agriculture, which would make the South better able to assert its rights within a constitutional union. Prattville was to be an example of such industrialization, and it was indeed, I believe, uh, a very good example for that program. However, voices of the fire eaters, such as that of William Lounge Yancey of Wetumpka, prevailed. And when my fellow Alabamians <laughs> voted to secede in January of 1861, I wholeheartedly cast my lot with that of the Confederate States of America and began immediately to subscribe the recruiting and outfitting of units to go from Autauga County to fight for the South. The Prattville Dragoons were the first company to leave, but there were several others. I myself was uh, elected an honorary member of the Prattville Grays, which was a home defense unit. The Confederacy was not successful in its attempt to maintain its rights within a constitutional union, but we continue to revere the cause for which its people struggled and sacrificed so much. My dear daughter-in-law, Julia Adelaide Pratt, first president of the Merrill Pratt chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, gave the keynote address at the Confederate Monument at the Otago County Courthouse in 1908. On one side of that monument, Jefferson Davis, ur Jeff Jefferson Davis urges us to remember that it is our duty 
to ensure that the young people rise worthy of their sires and remember and understand the cause for which they fought. That cause is inscribed on the other side of that monument and it is the right to local self-government. After that war, I did all I could to help the widows and orphans of Autauga County as well. Now we'll hear a few words from some of those who are buried here at Indian Hill Cemetery. But first, I need to make two announcements. The two Confederate officers who speak will be saluted with musket fire. So please be prepared for the sound of gunfire two times. Secondly, your Southern sense of civility may cause you to want to applaud each presentation, but we ask you to wait, if you will, until the last speaker, Dixon S. Hall, has concluded his remarks before you applaud. Our first speaker is Mrs. Euphemia Graham, and because she was born in Scotland, her presentation will be preceded by a rendering of Scotland, on, Scotland the Brave on the bagpipes by Mr. Bob Miller. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Euphemia Graham. You can call me Miss Effie. That's what all my friends called me. Now when I was growing up, ladies did not speak at public gatherings. But Mr. Hart, but this is such a special occasion and Mr. Harris was so keen that I make an appearance that I decided I would forego my modesty and I'd tell you all a bit about my life. I was born in 1766 on Christmas Day in Inverary, Scotland. I came to this country with my family when I was two years old. We arrived in North Carolina just at the time when the American colonies declared their independence. and then went on to fight a successful campaign to become the Independent Confederation of States. We Scots had never been treated well in Scotland by the English, and so we were enthusiastic supporters of the American Revolution. In fact, my father maintained, and his friends too, that we had all played a decisive role in winning the revolution, what we were not able to do in Scotland, we were able to do here in the United States. In 1818, when this territory was opening for settlement, my husband Archibald and I came from North Carolina here to Atauga County. The following year, Archie who was better known to all and sundry as old Baldy, <laughs> was able to buy 478 acres, which he turned into a very successful cotton farm. We raised a fine family here, and we were some of the original members of the First Presbyterian Church in Prattville. 
My children helped to shape this part of the country. My son William was the first mayor of Montgomery. My daughter Mary married Malcolm Smith, who owned a plantation called Whetstone Place. My grandson, Alfred, was the second lieutenant of the in the original who led the original Prattville Dragoons to war in 1861. My great-great-great-grandson was McQueen Smith, who has a road in Prattville named after him. I am very proud of what my descendants have accomplished and the names they made for themselves. I am very proud of this great state of Alabama that my family helped to build. And I am very proud of this great country which my descendants helped to develop. I am at peace here in Indian Hills. I'm surrounded by my family. The breeze rustling through the trees comforts me as I lay at rest. May God bless you all. My daughter Mary would like to say a few words. Thank you, Mother. I am Mary Baxter Graham Smith. I was born in Cumberland County, North Carolina in 1800. In 1817, I married Malcolm Smith. Malcolm had been well educated and well provided for by his father. His father was a very prosperous man, though he died when Malcolm was 10 years old. In 1820, Malcolm and I moved west with another immigration of Scots moving out, and we settled in Coosa County. Our plantation was called Whetstone Place. With us, we brought our firstborn, our one-year-old son, Neil. He was named for Malcolm's father. We were to have 11 more children in our, wed in our marriage, seven more sons and four daughters. We moved to Autauga County in 1825. Malcolm continued to prosper. By 1850, we owned 10,000 acres in this area, and we still owned the land in Coosa County. Malcolm owned several stores, other real estate holdings, a brickyard. Malcolm was an architect. He built two cotton mills in Autaugaville. He helped to build the first state prison in 1842 to 1845. With the help of Judge William Graham, they built the Presbyterian Church in Prattville, where Malcolm served as an elder for 26 years. As the wife of a leading citizen of the area, the mother to 12 children, and the mistress of a large plantation my life was quite filled. Malcolm and I had been married for 40 years when he died in 1857. Eventually, I moved in with my son, William James. William had learned to be a bricklayer at his daddy's brickyard. He was a very successful man. He owned a plantation down at Old Washington. He served in the Confederate Army like his brothers and he was the first Democrat elected to the Alabama representatives, to the Alabama legislature after the war. I was living with William in Prattville when I died in 1879, but I'm at peace here in this lovely serene place because this land is where I had watched my children grow up. Now I would like to introduce Miss Abigail Holt she is going to reenact an event that happened in 1861 when she presented the flag to the Prattville Dragoons and my son Albert, a flag that was lovingly made by the ladies of Prattville. Receive then from your mothers and sisters, from those whose affections greet you, these colors woven 
by our feeble but reliant hands. And when this bright flag shall float before you on the battlefield, let it not only inspire you with brave and patriotic ambition of a soldier aspiring to his own and his country's honor and glory, but also may it be a sign that cherished loves appeal to you to save them from a fanatical and heartless foe. <laughs> Ladies, with high beating hearts and pulses throbbing with emotions, we receive from your hands this beautiful flag, the proud emblem of our new country. To those who may return from the field of battle bearing this flag in triumph, though perhaps tattered and torn, this incident will always prove a cheering recollection. And for those whose fate it is to die a soldier's death, this moment brought before his fading vision will recall your kind and sympathetic word. And he will bless you as his soul takes its heavenly flight. May the God of battles look down upon us as we register a soldier's vow that no stain will ever be found on thy sacred folds, save the blood of those who attack thee and those who fall in thy defense. Comrades, you've heard the pledge that it guard and guide you on tended fields. May its bright folds inspire you with new strength, nerve your arms and steel your hearts to deeds of strength and valor. God save the South. Heartfelt thanks to Mr. Daniel Pratt for his most gracious generosity, giving $17,000 of his own money to outfit and provisions for our product full of dragoons. Those included magnificent uniforms such that Many who looked upon us mistook us all for officers. I was most fortunate to survive the war and return to beautiful Prattville, where I worked on my father's brickyard, from whence these bricks, which surround our final resting place, were hewn. I went on to heavenly slumber at the age of 82 passing away in August of 1907. And here I lie in eternal peace with my wife, my parents, and my grandmother in beautiful Indian Hill Cemetery. May God bless our Dixie homes. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to introduce myself. I am William Dixon Sassnett Hall, born July 28th in the year of our Lord, 1835, son of William and Sarah Jane Sassnett Hall of Otauga County. Our family managed a large estate along the Alabama River, supplying cotton to the textile mills of Europe, thus clothing a significant portion of the then known world. Life was indeed grand. However, when war was forced upon us by those who had previously professed to be our friends and countrymen, I felt honor bound to leave the life that I so loved and volunteer in defense of our homeland. I became a proud member of the 1st Alabama Infantry Regiment, a unit so named because it was the first unit constituted by, all, by act of the Alabama legislature. 
We were first posted to Pensacola, Florida, where we encountered our good friends from Autauga County, the Prattville Dragoons. And after a successful campaign there, we saw action at Santa Rosa Island. Then disaster struck at Island 10 in the Mississippi River. 150 of our regiment fell, many others captured. Enlisted men were imprisoned at Camp Butler. Commissioned officers such as myself in Johnson Island. As many as died in combat would die under the brutal conditions under which we were interred. We were subsequently released due to a prisoner exchange program later nullified on orders of Mr. Lincoln himself, an order that would consign thousands of men, Union and Confederate, to their death. After the disaster at Island 10, the unit was reorganized with seven companies re-enlisting many as artillerymen as opposed to infantrymen. Company K from here in Autauga County became known as the John Gill Shorter Artillery, named for the governor of the state. Combat campaigns followed. Corinth, Mississippi. Port Hudson, where I saw my last combat as I was compelled by illness to return home. Still, the unit carried on with campaigns at uh, um, Corinth, Mississippi, Port, Port Arthur, Kennesaw Mountain, Peachtree Creek, Atlanta, Franklin and Nashville, Tennessee. And at war's end, the unit found itself in North Carolina, where after four years of arduous struggle, the Confederate Army was compelled to yield to the overwhelming numbers and material superiority of the enemy. Upon returning home, Confederate soldiers found their homes burned, their farms destroyed, machinery destroyed, farm animals confiscated or shot and left to decay where they fell, and any items of value stolen. Unbelievably, the worst was yet to come. The harsh and vindictive terms upon which the peace was settled were made daily survival almost as difficult as combat itself. This talk of binding up the nation's wounds with malice towards none proved to be rhetoric and absolutely nothing more. Indeed, it was a cruel farce to call it reconstruction. Here again, the Christian charity of Mr. Pratt manifested itself as he and some others dug deeply into their pockets, building single family dwellings that they made available to those rendered destitute by the war. Had they not done so, many others would have perished. They once dotted the landscape here in Autauga County. Those that remain can be seen in downtown Prattville in what you call Hunt's Alley today. Finally, having endured war, disease, economic hardship, and the humiliation of Reconstruction, I was summoned home to meet my maker May 7th in the year 1906. However, I, my mortal re remains interred here at Indian Hills. But upon entering the pearly gates, I and my comrades were able to stand with the Apostle Paul and say, I have fought the good fight. I finished the course. I have kept the faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for attending. Your presence honors us all.
At this time, we will ask our chaplain, Tom Snowden, to come forward and offer a prayer of rededication. Let's remove our cover and bow our heads to our precious Lord. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we've truly been blessed tonight with the visitors that come, the reenactors that have portrayed, wow, the beautiful music that was played on the string band, the change that has come to an overgrown eyesore that has become a manicured landscape of notable internments of precious Prattville area citizens. You know, they contributed, Lord, so much to our society and to its history. And Lord, I just do thank you for the, our history. I'm glad that we can come together with like interest as Confederates right now. Lord, what a terrible time that was. And if we can hear the words as it was spoken just a while ago by the many different portrayals. Terrible. Lord, I, I pray that, uh, that this will not, will not come to our country again. We truly need a change. We need a revival. We need God, you, back into our country. Lord, we ask for that. I know the end times are, are certainly shown in the Bible. And it appears that they are just around the corner. But Lord, we have more souls that we'd like to add to, the, to, to, your, uh, to your heaven. And speaking of heaven, Lord, just, we have just celebrated a precious time of remembrance of Easter. Where you gave your precious son, Jesus Christ. Gave him to the old cross. Died. Hey, but he was resurrected on the third day. We did nothing to deserve that. But you so kindly and loved us with your great grace. Lord, I just thank you for that. Lord, in the rededication of the cemetery, I ask you your blessings upon it. As we look at the Confederate veterans that have been buried here, their families, the friends, the neighborhood, all at once a vibrant community known as Indian Hills, the sweet cemetery, that when I first came to this cemetery was just a wall of green earth and trees and bushes. Lord, thank you so much for allowing safety to the members of the Dragoons, but also to the community and others who came here to, to help restore the area. I'm asking now that you give blessings to the remainder of this ceremony. Uh, what a blessing it's been and what I, I, is going to be in the, coming up, I'm sure. Thank you, Lord, for all our visitors, all the people here in attendance. Ask your sweet blessings upon them. I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Snowden. Is the mayor present? Ah, very good. Very good. That's very good timing on the mayor's part. I want to introduce Mr. Ted Urquhart, or as I think we used to say in Scotland, Urquhart. Uh, Ted Urquhart is the president of the Alabama Cemetery Preservation Alliance, and Mr. Urquhart will present a couple of certificates. Uh, I have attended quite a few cemetery rededication programs in, across this state. And this has got to rank right up there with the very tip top of, of 
how to run a program. Uh, a lot of work and effort went into getting to where this cemetery is today, and I would just like to have uh, those who worked within the cemetery for what, the past 12 months or so? Please raise your hand and be recognized. Could you stand, please? <laughs> they deserve that because right about a year ago, this where we are now, looked like those trees back there in the back. This was a terribly neglected cemetery and as we have seen the program progress here today with those who are interred here speaking their words, they're a vital part of the history and the fiber of this community and of the state. And Dragoons, you done good. <laughs> and all those who fixed in with them. I do have a couple of awards to present here. One is to the city of Prattville, and do we have any representative from the city? Will the mayor do? Yeah, the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me get the right one. The city of Prattville, uh, as and before we get started in that, I got one more thing to talk about here. Uh, we recognize the people who did the work in here. Uh, a lot of you are local. How many have people interred here? Anybody? Okay, there. So I hope. Uh, things can, can progress to so that we can help maintain this cemetery and the state that it's become here today. The hard work has been done. We just need a little routine maintenance on it to keep it like this. Uh, how many people are not local that came from miles away? Quite a few. Thank all of you for your attendance here. Uh, recognitions. Uh, City of Prattville is well into preservation. A lot of historical preservation going on here. There's been a lot of history here. Uh, starting with some of these people. And it has grown within probably the past 20, 30, 40 years into a thriving city here uh, to what it was before. And the old part of the town there is being rejuvenated. We hope the city can uh, help uh, keep this on the agenda to help try to help maintain this or at least the city cannot maintain a private cemetery, but they can certainly encourage others to do some work on it and in contact with historical societies and what have you. And so what we've got here is a certificate of appreciation and uh, the citation reads, this certificate is awarded to the city of Prattville on its 27th day of April, 2015, in recognition of the city's continued efforts supporting the preservation of our historic landmarks as witnessed by the rededication this state of the Indian Hill Cemetery. And that's uh, issued by the Alabama Cemetery Preservation Alliance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, do we have a Dragoon rep? I've already said a few things about what you all have done, but you've assembled people, you got them together, you've got fire in their belly, and this is the result of it. Thank you so very much, and uh, all I can do is give issue this little piece of paper here that kind of says, hey, we really appreciate what you did, and the citation on this reads, this certificate is awarded to the Prattville Dragoons SC, SCV Camp 1524 on the 27th day of April, 2015, in recognition of civic and historic pride, leadership, and commitment con consistently displayed in supporting projects, resulting in the restoration and preservation of Alabama's forgotten and neglected cemeteries. Indian Hill Cemetery, Prattville, Alabama, the Alabama Cemetery Preservation Line, signed by myself. Thank you. If I can, just real quick, this is an impromptu, so I'm going to stumble over these like I stumbled over my lines. But um, I really do want to thank everyone who worked on this project, including not just the Dragoons, but a number of our neighbors here. I heard. I heard when you mentioned something about maintaining the cemetery, Paul, our neighbor over here to the left, was the first one to clap, I think, on that one. <laughs> and uh, it was really thanks to Paul. Uh, I, I, as I understand, he uh, brought the idea to our Paul, Whaley, and uh, that kind of got the ball rolling. And, and uh, we approached someone, and I don't see one person on this program that really needs to be recognized, and that's Benny Harris. Who, who absolutely led this entire effort, and he will refuse to say that. But uh, he, he scheduled everybody. He was here every every single time, and uh, boy, over, especially over the last few few days, he's he's really put in hours and hours, as did a number of, of folks in our camp and all. And I I really want to um, take this moment to again thank everybody for coming out here tonight, uh, including our distinguished guests, and. Uh, I appreciate uh, you enjoying this uh, event with us. And now we would like to, we've already thanked some people, but we want to thank the Camp 1921 Confederate String Band. Yeah. We want to thank Colonel Paul Whaley and the 33rd Alabama reenactors. We want to thank Commander Bill Watkins and his gun crew from St. Clair Camp 308 in We want to thank the Autauga County Sheriff Reserve officers who helped us with traffic control tonight. And now we'd like to recognize distinguished guests. First was Mayor Bill Gillespie. And I don't know if City Councilman Albert Striplin is here. Is he here? He's over here. And uh, County Commissioner Sid Thompson, did she make it? I guess not. <laughs> Probate Judge Al Booth, did he make an appearance? We want to recognize also the president of the Autauga County <laughs> Heritage Association, Mr. Matt Holcher. <laughs> the Alabama Alabama, the Autauga County Genealogical Society, and uh, one of our beloved women of the Alabama tribe, Ginger Jones, is a member of the Genealogical Society. Where is she? Where are you okay. Okay. Welcome any 
other members, I know John Brown is here from the Genealogical Society, so we recognize and welcome them. And we already mentioned, I believe it's Mr. Rainer, uh, who lives next door here and let some of us park in his yard, so we appreciate that. Now, finally, this is the final part of the program. We want to recognize those who have ancestors buried here in the cemetery, and these two ladies had to leave, so I'll mention them first. When we started to clean here, we heard from the residents that there were two elderly ladies who came and cleaned the plot immediately behind me here. The second, not the Smith plot, but the one behind. Thomas, I believe is the name. And that was really the only clear space in the whole cemetery at that point. And so we try, we hope to find those ladies before tonight, but it but it was tonight when they finally came, but they, they're uh, elderly and one wasn't feeling well, so they had to leave early. But their names are Marie Hall Bush and Helen Wilkins Sheffer. And that's their family lot back there. The grandparents are buried in the uh, plot, the Thomas plot behind me there. Mississippi's veiled with my old hat there for a sale I crossed upon a cotton bale to the rose of Alabama Oh, brown rosy, rose of Alabama The sweet tobacco posy is the rose of Alabama Oh, brown rosy, rose of Alabama, the 
The sweet tobacco posy is the rose of Alabama. 